Okay, Math 9, here we go. We're going to look at the multiplication principle short video, so let's get after it here. Multiplication principle, uh, similar to the addition principle where the magic number was 0, here the magic number is 1. I'm not trying to get 0 anymore. Here I have 3x's. I just want to know what 1x is worth. So how do you get uh, 1x from 3? Now, people say some smart things. They go, you subtract 2. Well, 3x minus 2 is that. I can't combine those things together. So then they might say, well, you could subtract 2x. Yeah, that's true. 3x minus 2x is 1x. But if I subtract 2x from that side, I have to subtract 2x from that side, and I don't actually have my x's together anymore. So we can't use subtraction. We have to use division. Because 3x divided by 3, well, that's just x. And then divide by 3, x equals negative 5. So when we're trying to get to 1, we use division. When we're trying to get to 0, we use addition or subtraction. So here, 4x equals 48, so I'm going to divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 12. Negative 2r, well that means I need to divide by negative 2, because the negatives cancel, the 2's cancel. And then here, divide by negative 2, r is equal to negative 5 over 2. Here I have 5x, so I'm going to divide by 5, divide by 5 x equals 12 over 5. Now you might be looking at this answer and this answer and saying, well, I can't simplify those. And no, you can't. But a fraction is a wonderful number. So if you get an answer that is a fraction, enjoy that moment. Be confident in your math, okay? Those are numbers too. So what if you're dividing? Well, remember in uh, when we were dealing with fractions, if we had, uh, I'm just going to make up a little scenario here. If we had uh, common factors top and bottom, what happened? They canceled out, right? So that's what we're going to create in this scenario. I'm going to multiply by a factor of 4 because now I have a 4 top and bottom, so they're going to cancel out. And here I'm going to multiply by 4. So r is 20. Here I'm dividing by 7, so I'm going to multiply by 7. Those cancel. Multiply by 7. x equals 80. Four. So when you are multiplying, right, when you're multiplying with a variable, you divide to get rid of it. And when you are dividing with the variable, you multiply to get rid of it. You're doing the opposite operation. So here you have a negative 2. So careful. You're multiplying by 2, yes, but you also want to get rid of that negative. So you're multiply by negative 2. Because now the 2s will cancel and the negatives will cancel. So here you multiply by negative 2. So r equals negative 6. Now, I put this one in here just to help you out, okay? x over 7 is the same as 1 over 7 times x because that means 1 over 7 times x over 1, and you're multiplying tops, tops, bottoms, bottoms. So if you see x over 7, know that it is exactly the same as 1 over 7 times x. So we approach this the same way, multiply by 7. Because look, those are going to cancel, and you're left literally with 1x, which is what we want, multiply by 7. So be aware of that notation. It's an important distinction, all right? And now, again, the same thing works when we're dealing with variables. Where it's about manipulating the equation, not just determining the answer. So here, I want A, so I'm going to divide by B, because B divided by B is 1, and I'm going to divide by B. So A equals C divided by B. Sure, we don't know what they are, but that is a statement for A. And then here, I'm A divided by C. Well, I'm going to multiply by C, because then they will cancel out. I'm going to multiply by C. A equals B times C, or A equals B, C, because two letters next to each other implies multiplication. So there you go, multiplication principle, short video, the full lesson's there, it's connected to section 3.1, a lot of practice with these, these should be your most basic steps, multiplication principle, addition principle, and then we're going to move up the staircase from there, okay, keep it up.